Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that pursuant to the provision of Standing Order 28, this House approves the calendar of the National Assembly, regular sessions for the third session of the year 2024, as contained in the schedule attached to the order paper, that is uh, the page marked 006, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the House Business Committee having been reconstituted yesterday, Honorable Speaker, met and uh, proposed this new calendar for this year, rather for this session, third session of the year 2024. And Honorable Speaker, this calendar constitutes a total of uh, 122 sittings beginning yesterday, running all the way to the 5th of December this year. This Honorable Speaker excludes any special sittings and extra sittings that the House may resolve to sit, depending on the workload that uh, will come in the course of the session. Honorable Speaker, as, as members are also aware, the first part of this session is largely guided by the submission of the budget policy statement and the medium-term debt strategy, which we expect to be here by the 15th of February, that is tomorrow and should be considered and adopted by the House within a period of 14 days. And that Honorable Speaker tells members that all members of departmental committees and those that sit in the Budget and Appropriations Committee will have a rather busy two weeks, first two weeks. And I hope they will all be available. Honorable Speaker, the Division of Revenue Bill uh, also is expected to be in the National Assembly by the 10th of March this year. And Honorable Speaker, additionally, the second part of the session will be guided by budget timelines on conducting public hearings by the Budget and Appropriations Committee on the annual budget estimates. And as such, this should be undertaken into account before the committee tables its report on the estimates for approval by the House. Honorable Speaker, as you may also be aware, mid-June will be pronouncement of the budget highlights and the revenue raising measures and thereafter approval of budget and appropriations committee report on the annual estimates introduction approval of the appropriation of the appropriations bill you may also note honorable speaker that the finance bill the appropriation bill and the supplementary appropriation bill should be approved by the 30th of june 2024 Honorable Speaker, the preparation of the calendar has also taken into account the Easter holiday, and I note today many of us donning the Ashwins the sign, those of us who profess the Catholic faith. And uh, Honorable Speaker, with Good Friday being on the 29th of March 2024, and Easter Monday being on 1st of April 2024, this is a time that will be on a short recess, and Honorable Speaker, the House Business Committee has also endeavored to take care of our Muslim brothers and sisters who will be having their Ramadan from the 10th, 9th or 10th of March this year, and therefore just about a week after or so, we shall have our short recess, and therefore not have to bear uh, through the Ramadan and uh, have a very strenuous period working in the House. They will be on a short recess. Further, Honorable Speaker, the calendar has also taken into consideration our annual prayer breakfast, which is now part of our annual calendar, which is scheduled to take place on the last Thursday of May, that being 30th May 2024. Honorable Speaker, finally, the calendar has taken into consideration the school's calendar for both primary and secondary school holidays. And for this, Honorable Speaker, I mean public primary and secondary schools, because I know the Honorable Owen Bayer was asking me whether those in uh, the international curricula are taken care of. But I think also during their summer break in uh, Jul June, end of June, July, August, they also have time uh, to have a short recess and the long recess in August when your children, for those who are in the other curricula, are at home. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, uh, with these few remarks, I believe this calendar, Honorable Speaker, will serve us well throughout the year, 
and will be able to guide us even in our planning, even for our constituency operations. I know many of us, just before we got to the house, we had occasion to award part of the bursaries that we are giving, and I'm certain even now as we await the next disbursement of NGCDF to complete the uh, bursary awards and also implementation of projects that we oversight, we will have time created out of this calendar to be able to carry on with our other representation work and oversight in our constituencies and even oversight of government operations in ministries, departments, and agencies of government. Honorable Speaker, finally, I was keenly listening to the debate earlier on the earlier motion, and I want to agree with the Honorable Nikal and Honorable Makali Mulu that we all have a duty and an obligation, one, to listen to each other, two, to have opportunity to speak. And Honorable Speaker, whenever any member of the House calls on the Speaker to close debate and put the question, doesn't mean that is curtailing anybody else from speaking. And if anything, Honorable Speaker, it will be casting aspersions on the person of the speaker or whoever is chairing the session to assume that the person, any member who calls on closure of debate, and the speaker asks the House whether that is the mood of the House, that uh, the speaker is in any way curtailing any member from speaking. And Honorable Speaker, I would bear witness that in the past, I have not seen the speaker in any way curtail any member from whichever side of the political divide from expressing themselves and members should be free to debate. This is a house of debate and anyone and everybody should avail themselves to come and debate. Honorable Speaker, I want to encourage uh, my colleagues, the Honorable Nikal and Honorable Makali Mulu, and I know the two of them are quite diligent uh, and present always in the house and pray that even those others who uh, want to come and speak, they will always be as available as Nama Bonikal and take time, all of us, to read and be, get the gist of whatever is before us in the house so that you offer meaningful contributions and contributions that you also, also show people in your constituency and Kenyans at large that you truly understand what you are doing here, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, allow me to now move and once again to wish all of us a very good uh, session, uh, this session, as I wish all Kenyans a happy Valentine's uh, today, especially our ladies, and especially the member for Migori, and the member for Busia, uh, the Honorable Catherine uh, <laughs> Am Am Amanyo. Uh, I, I know uh, she's very well dressed today, and uh, I can see her, she's in black and red. <laughs> and I am sure um, at the end of the day, she will have a good evening. Honorable Speaker, allow me to move <laughs> and uh, request the member for Taveta, Taita Taveta, sorry, the member for Taita Taveta, the Honorable to second uh, approval of this calendar. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. And uh, before I uh, second, I also want to take uh, this priority. I want to wish all the Catholics a happy Lenten period. I also want to wish a happy Valentine uh, to all other my colleagues. And also want to congratulate the House Business uh, Committee having constituted yesterday I can say they have done a, a good job. Uh, the calendar is well thought. Looking at it, it gives us enough time to execute our mandate uh, here in the chamber. And also, it also gives us enough time to go and interact with our voters, as well as time to have some time with the family. So I uh, want to say this is a very good calendar for the purpose of planning. Uh, our work. So thank you very much and I second.